This is the planet we share. Each week we travel above, below, and across its surface on a journey of discovery. Today, the return of the phoenix. One rare bird makes a surprising splash in the Syrian desert. In the Caribbean, we discover a treasure trove of nature's jewels at the bottom of the sea. And bringing up baby in the harsh and unforgiving Sonoran Desert. This is Wild Chronicles. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. Additional support provided by Lindblad Expeditions, celebrating five decades of exploration to the wildest places on Earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson, advising you to put your seat backs in the upright position and buckle up, because we are about to ricochet around the planet. We begin in Syria, where many experts have believed that for more than 70 years, the distinctive-looking northern bald ibis has been extinct. But as we're about to discover, this bird known as the Arab Phoenix is now returned to the land of desert and mystique. Palmyra, an ancient city in the Syrian desert. Ruins litter this arid landscape, evidence of the long line of empires that once ruled the region. This distinct bird once also reigned supreme here. The northern bald ibis was common across the Middle East and North Africa, a symbol of wisdom to the Bedouins that roam the desert. Now, less than 300 bald ibises are left in the wild. Nearly all far from here in Morocco. Some believe them completely extinct in Syria for more than 70 years. But National Geographic researcher John Lucasera has made a startling discovery. He and a team of local hunters, Bedouins and conservationists, have found a small group of bald ibises summering here in Syria's Albadia Desert. Il culmine, diciamo, di questo lavoro, tre anni di sopralluoghi e esplorazione nel deserto, è stata la scoperta. The apex of this work, three years of explorations in the desert, was the discovery of this very rare bird, the bald ibis, classified as critically endangered by the IUCN, an international authority in the field of conservation biology. This means that the short-term chances for its extinction are very high. There are only seven birds but they form an active breeding colony, genetically unique from the ibises in far off Morocco. But this fragile population, just found, is already in danger of being lost for good. In this huge desert, sheep may seem inconsequential, but these eating machines have an impact on an arid ecosystem and their owners are increasing in population, too. The region's desert dwellers often pull up shrubs to create fuel for fire, stripping bare the desert's already fragile soil. So how can these rare ibises be protected? Gianluca is organizing Bedouins like Ahmed to mount an around-the-clock watch on the ibises' nesting sites. But to ensure they're protected year-round, John Luca wants to know where they go when they migrate away from Albadia in the winter. To find out, he's brought in a wizard of satellite telemetry, Lubomir Pesky. Our protection here in the breeding areas is not sufficient. We need to know where they are going and also try to protect them during the second half of the year, during the winter. Their original plan is to outfit two of the ibises with radio transmitters. The devices will allow scientists to track the birds' migratory routes. 
But to attach the transmitters, they must first catch the birds. Lubomir constructs a trap that will capture the ibises without harming them. We are ready to trap those animals. I think that we develop a trap and these birds are already going and visiting every day, regularly visiting, drinking point. And so we, if we install our trap uh, close to this drinking point, we certainly can catch them. But at the last minute, they receive some disappointing news. Syrian authorities have not approved their request to outfit the ibises with transmitters. Unfortunately, this year, we were very close to accomplishing our goals. We were able to overcome all the trapping-related obstacles. But now, a number of bureaucratic and political problems arose. It's a setback, but John Luke and his team hopes it will only be temporary. They will be here next year, when the ibises return. Now that this small population of rare birds has been discovered, they won't be lost without a fight. Bedouins like Ahmed are ready to help monitor the ibis's survival. With their vigilance, the so-called Arab Phoenix may reign supreme in the Syrian desert once again.